Hi, welcome back to Renovation School. On this episode, I'm going to show you how to get the highest quality epoxy done in your garage or your basement floor. Let's watch some before and after shots. Before even empty out the garage, I had to figure out what kind of a surface I'm going to be working on. In my case, it's just bare concrete. There's no other uh, sealer, paint, or uh, old epoxy sitting on top of it. How did I figure out that there's no sealer on top of my uh, concrete? I simply just poured some water on it and I noticed the concrete was absorbing all the water from the surface. So it can tell me it was changing its color, it, it, the concrete was basically getting wet. If you have sealer on top and you spray water on it, it doesn't absorb it in, the water just slides right off or sits on top of the surface, it doesn't get soaked into the actual concrete. I'm going to tape a little piece of plastic on the surface of the concrete in two or three different spots in my garage and let this sit overnight. I'm going to show up the next day and see if there's moisture trapped under my plastic uh, piece. If there is no moisture, it means we're good to go. Before we get too excited and move on to the epoxy, we have to get the surface ready. Just like any other painting projects, doing such a job, doing epoxy is also 90% prep and 10% the actual work. Before we get any further, if there's any cracks on the concrete, it has to be fixed. If there's any imperfections, any high or low spot, we have to uh, grind down. And we have to fix all the imperfections before applying any coating on top. As far as the cracks on the concrete, this is extremely minimal. You can see it's a very small hair crack. This specific one with the type of epoxy that I'm using doesn't have to be fixed. But if you want to fix it, there are products in the shelves at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you're getting your stuff from. Uh, you can apply it onto the seam, let it dry up, then you can grind it down, make it nice and smooth to the surface, and then move on to the next uh, step. So for this size, crack I'm not worried about this it, it's gonna be perfectly fine reason why is I'm using premium epoxy which I'm gonna show later on on the video these are the saw cuts that you see in the concrete so what they do basically after they pour this garage the next day the concrete uh, contractor shows up and make these saw cut marks the concrete always expand and contracts so these are meant to be there so you're not gonna fill these up right now I've seen some youtubers filling them up I normally do these at the very, very end, and I tell you at the end of the video why I do that, the reason behind it. So I grabbed my masonry chisel and I started removing all those loose debris and soft concrete that is sitting on the corners. Uh, I made sure I do this to all sides of the garage, all the walls and stuff, and uh, remove all these loose debris from there. As I said, it's all about the prep work, so if you want this uh, epoxy to last for a long time and not fail, these steps are pretty crucial. You have to be on it, make sure that it's done right and proper, make sure you take your time and clean up as much as you can uh, in order to get a good result. On this spot, I had some dried paint sitting on top of one of the stairs at the very end of the garage. So I grabbed the same masonry chisel and I hit it with the hammer, tried to remove as much uh, dried up paint as I could. The goal is to remove uh, as much as you can. You may not be able to get it all, but basically do your absolute best to remove as much material as you can. Uh, kind of get it to bare concrete as much as it's possible. After removing the loose parts, I got my leaf blower and cleaned up the entire garage and then I pressure washed the entire surface. After this was done, I went to the Home Depot and rented this device. It's a floor uh, grinder. It comes uh, with different types of uh, grinding discs that you can uh, purchase or rent. So this is how the grinding disc look like for that machine. The top ones are in case you have paint, epoxy or sealer on top of your concrete. The bottom one is designed for bare concrete if there's no coating on it. 
it actually runs a lot smoother and easier as you can see these flaps that have that sanding sponge on it is kind of easier to move around it's super soft versus the top ones it's a lot more difficult to move uh, as I said it's designed for uh, you know uh, paint and uh, epoxy removal I got this because there was some stains on my garage and I wanted to itch it pretty good so the way you put these on you just put this down like that and then this sits right into it you just line, line it up and there you go it's ready to go it's a very good idea to add some water to the surface of the concrete before grinding it down. It's not an easy machine to operate, especially that I used the wrong type of uh, grinding disc on it. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I should have gone with the other type as I don't have any paint or sealer or uh, old epoxy on the surface of my concrete. Uh, operating this one is a slightly more difficult, but it's going to make the job a little bit faster than the other kind. Uh, so the idea here is just to etch the surface, kind of grind down the whole surface. So there is no loose dirt sitting on top. Uh, plus uh, we want to kind of remove as much stains and dirt as we can. I'm trying to use the grinder a little bit and then I'm gonna wash down all that dirty grind off basically material that came off the floor. It makes it easier for the machine to go over it again and again. And don't forget to go in every different direction, kind of don't stick with one pattern. Uh, try to go in uh, right and left, up and down. Try to uh, grind it down as much as you can. This is another area in the garage where I had the sustain and as you can see this machine is doing a very good job removing it. Uh, there's also another process that you can acid etch the surface before applying your epoxy. I am going to cover that in a separate video on a different garage for you guys. On this one my focus is just to mechanically remove as much stains as I can. With the acid etching not all the stains will come off especially stuff like this. It will etch the surface of the concrete, but it's not going to be a superior method to this. This is the best way to remove and etch the surface of the concrete. And as I said, uh, because I want to go premium on this video, I am going to show you the best method of doing it. So after the grinding was done, I got some dish soap and some simple green heavy duty cleaner. I put a little bit of uh, both of these uh, liquids in a bucket and I uh, filled it up with water. Then I poured it on the concrete and I started washing. With uh, using that brush that I rented from Home Depot, it's a soft brush. It's almost like a broom. It does a very good job cleaning up this whole surface. The idea basically is to remove any remaining concrete that might be sitting here after the grinding job is done. So I am going to go throughout the whole surface. I'm going to wash it again in two, three different directions and then I'm going to pressure wash the entire garage after this soap is gone. I want this to be nice and super clean before I actually apply my epoxy on it. This is how it looks like. It looks super nice and clean. I'm going to let it dry up for two full days before I actually move to the epoxy process. Okay, so this is the most important part of this video. If you've done this much prep to your surfaces and concrete, this is time to talk about the actual epoxy. A lot of people go to the Home Depot or Lowe's or somewhere, they just buy that junk rust-oleum product from the shelf and they're extremely cheap quality it doesn't even last that long if you're lucky you get like four or five years out of it if you're lucky depending on the condition especially in Canada it fails less than like two or three years 
Reason why is that's only 50% epoxy. So I, this is what I bought. This is the actual epoxy. It's a two part mix epoxy, but it's a 100%. If you can't get your hands on a 100% epoxy, Sherwin William has a type, uh, I don't want to name their products, but it's only 85%. That's not bad. I've done that in the past a few times and clients have been happy with it. But this is even a lot superior to that. So I decided to go with this product for the sake of this video. So just so you, you know what you're purchasing or what to do basically. This is my epoxy. This comes in three uh, containers. Uh, there's part A and part B. You just put them all together, mix them up, and you don't want to spend too much money. You just put this on and you're good to go. But I want to go one step uh, more forward and you know get the absolute premium quality product. So I went ahead and I purchased some flakes. These are all by Lab Surface Company. So these are the flakes. Flakes are what you see at a lot of car shows and a lot of other cool places. It's just like, I will show you throughout the video how exactly I spray these or sprinkle this on top of my wet uh, epoxy. After that's completely dried up, I'm gonna put this clear coat on top to protect that flakes from coming off and stuff. And it just gives it a nice showroom look. It's gonna look phenomenal and beautiful. And for me, I'd like to keep it super nice and shiny so I can wash it and clean it up easily. That's a specialty sand that they put it onto the top coat depending on how much of, you know, how much you want it to be a slip resistant. You add as much as you want to it, but not too much, obviously. Especially if you're planning on washing your vehicles and stuff like that, getting this place wet all the time, it's a good idea to use this. Or on areas like a stairs or somewhere that there's a lot of traffic going up and down, especially if someone have wet shoes, you don't want them to fall down. So you can add some of this to the top coat on. So yeah, let's get to the next part. Okay, so it's been about two days since I washed it last. Uh, everything is nice and clean. I'm gonna show you that in a, a second how the floor looks like right now before I actually start doing the epoxy process. I'm just gonna go ahead and blow the entire garage, make it all nice and clean and get rid of any debris that might have been in the garage or maybe the wind or something brought them in. I'm gonna clean up the entire place and I'm gonna give you a close up look. Some of those stained, stained areas are not uh, gone, but it, for the most part, they're clean as hell. You can see how the surface is all scratched up and you know, it's kind of ready to accept that epoxy now. It's kind of very difficult to show it in this lighting, but uh, I can see the whole surface is all kind of matte. There's no sheen whatsoever to the surface of this concrete now. It's very clean, super clean. Let me show you the edges, how they look. After cleaning those areas, this is how it looks like. Okay, so the epoxy is not supposed to be exposed to the weather. Because of that, I am gonna tape the area that is sitting outside the garage. Where my garage door closes, there's a line, there's a stain kind of look thing. On the ground here, you probably can't see it on the video, it's right there. I am gonna tape it right here because I don't want my epoxy to be exposed to the outside of the garage. And I also don't want that look to be different when you come from outside, you have that concrete driveway and you know, the part of the garage that is left, I don't want these to be two different you know, colors and stuff, it's not gonna look as good. So I am gonna tape it right on the garage door line. So it's finally time to mix my epoxy. I have three containers in my box. The first two are my base color. As you can see, I went with gray. I am gonna pour them inside this bigger container. After mixing this for a little bit, I'm gonna add the hardener to it. Uh, when you're mixing it, make sure you go with slow. Don't put too much speed on your drill or it's gonna introduce too much bubble to it, air bubbles basically, and it's gonna look horrible when it's done. 
uh, after adding the hardener as well make sure you go pretty slow with it don't go fast with the mixing it I am gonna take my time and mix it for a good two or three uh, minutes before applying it again all the epoxy uh, products are different this one that I'm using here is 100% solid epoxy uh, this one doesn't require any sweat time but some other uh, manufacturers require a sweat time basically after you mix it up you have to let it set for 10, 15, 20 minutes depending on what manufacturer it is and what the temperatures are uh, then you're gonna start applying it uh, for me it didn't require any wait time so I could go uh, jump into starting and applying it on uh, I'm using my brush I'm gonna apply this on onto the corners after those corners are done I'm gonna pour some of the epoxy on the ground and start rolling it down uh, it's a very good idea to use a notch a squeegee. The notch the squeegees are very good. They make the life so much easier. You can spread it so much faster. But because I'm doing this in the middle of the corona crisis uh, and a lockdown, everywhere is closed and it takes another two weeks until I get one. So I decided to just roll this down. And I am using a half inch uh, nap roller for this job. Uh, this roller is designed to work with solvent based material. So basically it's not gonna swell up in the middle of the job on me. What I'm doing basically, I push this epoxy down to the surface of the concrete. Uh, once I know that I got the coverage, then I back roll it nice and smooth like that, uh, making sure the whole surface is all uh, smooth and even. And uh, it's extremely important to make sure you get a nice and uniform uh, coating. This stuff kind of dries up extremely fast uh, especially that I'm applying it in such a heat uh, time. Uh, it's about 35 degrees in Windsor, Ontario when I'm applying this. It's very difficult to work with this kind of material and heat. It kind of cures a lot faster than what the package says. Uh, so you got to be on top of it. As I said, I've done this many times and I know my timing. I've been uh, good at it. If it's your very first time and you're applying it in the heat time, make sure uh, you just do this at a, you know, late in the afternoon or early in the morning time when the temperature is not that uh, hot. I decided to put these spiky shoes on. It makes uh, the life easier. Now you can walk on top of the wet uh, epoxy and apply your flakes. It's a good idea to bring the garage doors down. I only leave a little bit at the very bottom. I just can't take the chances of uh, the wind blowing any kind of unwanted material on top of my wet epoxy. For that reason I kept the garage door that low. If you're not using those spiky shoes make sure you plan your escape, make sure you start from the back side of the garage so when you get to the front you can escape from the garage when it's completely done. You don't want to walk on the wet epoxy at the very end. So I applied it the same exact way on half of the garage. And then I'm going to start by uh, uh, applying my uh, flakes to the whole surface. So this is how I broadcast my uh, flakes. I throw it on the air. I'm kind of aiming to the garage uh, ceilings. When it comes down, it kind of lays down very nice and even. Uh, the box is pretty heavy. I decided to put it on one side. And on those areas that I didn't have a good coverage, I'm just manually going closer to those areas and applying a little bit more. Uh, just don't forget you want to throw it right on the air. The higher you throw it, the better it's going to be. Uh, the more even it's going to land on the ground. I'm planning on installing some kind of uh, scare board on the bottom of the uh, drywall. So for that reason, I'm not applying too much flakes on the bottom portion. These flakes come in very different colors and they must be applied when the surface is wet. If you are on a budget, you can just get away with the actual epoxy without any flakes or top coat. It's going to be a very nice and durable coating. Uh, but I just wanted to get a better look. I wanted this to look amazing. So that my epoxy is sitting, kind of it's curing pretty fast. As I said, it's extremely hot outside and my camera is dying. So I couldn't film the whole process, unfortunately. The next day I got my leaf blower and blow all those uh, loose flakes. Right after that I got my flooring scraper, you can get these from Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, I make sure I get all those corners, all the edges and I also make sure I go in both directions, right and left, up and down, make sure you, you get every inch of the garage. You have to pass this on the surface of the epoxy and make sure there's no loose chips or uh, flakes sitting on the very top. You want to remove as much as you can. 
and then uh, I'm gonna clean up all those expansion joints in the concrete making sure it's all completely nice and clean then I'm gonna grab myself a nice vacuum and vacuum the whole surface you have to make sure there's no dirt and debris left before applying your clear coat I got a screwdriver and I gave it a few passes in all those expansion joints and I vacuumed it for the stairs I'm using a 6 inch drywall knife I'm scraping all those areas that I cannot get with the big scraper. I'm trying to go in all directions and remove as much loose flakes as I can. And then I'm gonna use my uh, vacuum to ensure it's clean and free of any debris. I also made sure I vacuumed the whole surface of the garage. I vacuumed it three times just to make sure there's nothing left. Uh, you got to make sure you go in both directions just so there is no dirt and debris left on top of it If there is debris left the clear coat is not going to do its job It might crack or chip or it might come off at a later time to ensure that doesn't happen You have to make sure it's super clean I ended up cleaning this garage three times in every direction just to be on the safe side and make sure there's no loose debris left on it then we're gonna move to the next step. So now that the garage is clean, it's time to mix the clear coat. This is my clear coat box. It has two containers inside it and I'm planning on only mixing half of these containers. It's about 38 degrees outside today and it makes the epoxy cure a lot faster what the label says. As you can see, I'm using different steer sticks for both containers, again, because I'm only using half of this. I'd like to shake it uh, first or mix it first before actually putting it inside that last container. So now that part A and part B are in that container, it's time to mix it. Again, I'm going to go pretty slow on mixing it. You don't want to go fast. Uh, when you go fast, you're going to introduce some air to it. And when you're applying it onto the surface, you are going to notice it. It's not going to look good. So take your time, make sure you go nice and slow and mix it for at least a good two to three minutes before applying it. Again, on this clear coat, there's no sweat time, so I can apply it right away. Again, with the clear coat also, I started from the backside of the garage. I poured some on the floor and then I rolled it down in both directions, making sure I get a nice and even coat throughout the whole garage. This coating is pretty thin and it goes on very nice and smooth. It's actually very satisfying when you're doing this. It's super nice. You can see the result almost immediately. As soon as it goes on, it gets a better shape. It looks super beautiful. It's very nice to do this. Actually, I was enjoying uh, this part of the job. Again, when you're doing this, make sure you leave some space for yourself so you can escape at the end of the job. I have that extra door at the end of my garage so I can go out of it no problem but if you're uh, doing it uh, and you don't have a door or something make sure you start it from the back uh, and come toward the front of the garage and make sure you place something on the outside so you can step on that when you get to the outside in case you have something on your shoes. The roller I'm using is good for oil based paint so it doesn't swell. The same exact way I applied the clear coat on top of these stairs. I just went a slightly thicker on this because uh, I'm gonna finish a basement apartment here and these stairs go to my basement. I will show you the whole process on that as well on future videos. This is how it looks like at the end of the day. Uh, on the next little bit, I'm gonna show you how I take care of those expansion joints. So earlier in the video, I said I'm gonna be explaining about these joints. These are called expansion joints. These are done by the concrete contractor. The next day that they pour the concrete, they show up and make these cuts. When the concrete is cured, all those cracks are going to happen right in the center of this. So this prevents it from, you know, cracking from different areas. So now if I was applying my caulking beforehand and then doing the epoxy over top of it, no matter how good you clean up those edges, let's say if you're applying that caulking in now and you wanted to smear these edges or clean up these edges, you're gonna leave a little bit of residue on top of the surface of the concrete, right on those edges. And what happens later on when you put the epoxy coating on top of this, those edges are gonna be fragile because there's a coating of uh, caulking or whatever material that you use to fill these cracks with is sitting right on the edges there. You don't want to fill these with anchoring epoxy or something that is extremely hard or harder than the surface of the concrete. 
you want to use something flexible like silicone or some kind of a caulking that has that ability to expand and contract with the concrete. So for that reason, because I'm going to be pulling jacks or heavy equipment, saws and other material on top of the surface a lot, I prefer doing my, concrete, uh, doing my uh, epoxy done first and then applying the caulking onto this. So that's how I apply the caulking in there. I'm using mono product here uh, because when I'm filming this video, uh, basically we are in the middle of a lockdown due to coronavirus. All the stores were closed, nothing was open, and we had no idea when the stores are going to be open. This is the only thing I had in hand and I wanted to use it because I needed to use my garage very badly. Uh, this stuff goes on white, it dries clear. Uh, but I highly recommend you use silicone even if you have a different uh, flake color or base color. Uh, basically that ultra clear silicone uh, will give you a very nice look. It has a uh, glass look to it. it. It's very translucent. You won't even notice it. It's mold and mildew resistant. It is going to look so much better than this. As you can see, I'm trying to remove all those excess material after applying the caulking on there. So no matter how good you clean it, there's always going to be a little bit of it left on the surface of the epoxy. And what happens, it's going to catch a little bit of dirt after some time. And uh, I'm going to just show you how you can clean it. Keep in mind, you only have to clean this one time and that's it. I'd rather clean this one time rather than uh, having chipped off or broken epoxy on those edges. You're going to get some denatured alcohol, pour it on a rag and give it a few passes on top of this. It's going to clean it right up. You won't even know that it's been there. There you go guys, it's done. I guarantee this flooring is going to last as long as this house lasts. It's going to be that durable. Again, thank you very much for watching Renovation is Cool. I will be posting a lot of new videos on this channel. So if you're interested in home improvement projects, please hit that subscribe button. And if you got any value out of this video, please hit that like. It is really going to be a big help. Thank you very much. Till next time.